Gunmetal is a fantastic game for the modern price tag. I think I got it for under a dollar during a sale. It's very simple, there's some war going on, and the faction you are part of developed this mech to turn the tide. You are John No Name, the pilot of said mech. It can transform into a fighter jet at the press of a button. There's a whole arsenal of weapons that unlock as the game progresses. There's a cutscene at the beginning and then one at the end. Besides that, there's like no plot. I bet all the plot is in the manual, but I don't think it would change the atmosphere much. But if you care, you are fighting for a nation on the planet Helios. For some reason, I don't think it's explained anywhere, forces from Earth are invading, and they're arriving via some jump gate. So yes, it's as simple as, you are a soldier in a war for something probably stupid. Probably some politician was killed by being in the wrong place at the wrong time. There's only one voice actor, and it's the mission briefing guy. This farming area is the source of essential provisions for our troops. We have done all we can to prevent enemy occupation, but the front line has finally been breached. Our intelligence headquarters has now come under heavy attack. It is finally time to reveal Project Gunmetal. Show no mercy! He also says stuff during the missions themselves, but it's just weird. I can't think of another game that has literally one voiced character. I'm kind of curious if there's more. Let me know down in the comments if there's another game where there's literally just one voiced character. I'm kind of curious to see what you guys come up with. Anyway, that's the gist of the game. There's not much to it. Each mission has its own objectives, but it's just different flavors of destroy that, defend this, escort these. It all boils down to just killing stuff. The game was developed by Rage Software. There's a variety of Rage games I've written scripts for, but the videos were never finished. Main reason being is that their products have little to nothing going on, making it really difficult to make a video longer than five minutes. There's a pretty amazing arcade-like top-down shooter by Rage that I recommend everyone check out. Expendable. It's also on Steam and works out of box. Apparently, it was used to demo some graphics card, and that's something you'll see a lot with Rage's games. They all feel like engine tests or proof of concepts. They really don't feel like they ever meant to be full games. I did go through a bit of a Rage software phase because I discovered them recently, but most of their games aren't worth exploring. Most of their products can be experienced in 30 minutes to an hour, in some cases less. Gunmetal itself only took me two and a half hours to beat. The difference between other Rage products I've tried so far and Gunmetal is that Gunmetal was so fun I beat it in one session and I loved every second of it. Except one mission in particular. I sat down, breast start, and was captivated till the credits. With the exception of the one mission I, I just mentioned, uh, where I almost rage quitted. Majority of the game is fairly easy, and when it's difficult, it's not unfair. Except again, that one mission. So let's talk about the gameplay. When you are a mech, you have a shield that must be depleted before taking damage. When you are a jet, you don't have the shields, but you have speed and barrel rolls that can dodge most lock-on attacks. Majority of the time I stay in jet mode. I rarely found instances where it was better to be in the mech. There was one mission where there were anti-air installations on cliffs, so I walked around to take out the mines for the AI I was escorting. Eventually I learned I could do the same thing as a jet, I just had to stay low. I think the jet does the most damage barring a few slowly reloading mech weapons, and its speed allows you to quickly retreat. Some enemies have anti-air weapons, making it more difficult to take them on. See these red dots on this radar? Those are all surface-to-air missiles on my tail. So those are enemies where switching to the mech will make it easier to take them out, but sometimes I just dodge the missiles and just take them out while in the jet. In order to collect ammo and heal at what the game calls re-energizers, you have to be a mech. But besides that, I think the jet is the way to go majority of the time. Speaking of the energizing healing station thingies, one thing I appreciate about gunmetal is that most structures are destructible. The AI will sometimes target energizers to cut off your ability to heal. Sometimes it's difficult to kill enemies without blowing up your own civilian houses. Speaking of, look at this dude taking an evening stroll while all-out war is going on. There's also wildlife in some missions. Man, I just love this game. It has a lot of charm with little details like this. And for some reason, the trees catching fire just like warms my heart. I love it. I don't, I don't know why I love this so much. I love the idea of mech games, but I rarely find ones I like. A lot of them tend to be difficult simulations. Don't get me wrong, Mech Warrior is a fantastic franchise, but sometimes I don't want to play something so in-depth or complicated. It's one of the reasons why I love Shogo so much. The mechs are essentially first-person shooters with bigger weapons. It's the scale I like. I love fighting alongside normal-sized units. When I found out this game had original Xbox released, I was slightly angered. I would have loved this game as a kid. 
but I do not remember ever seeing it on the shelves of my local game stores. See, I loved Robotech Battle Cry as a kid, and I remember it having mech levels and jet ones. It wasn't until I was writing the script and going back to watch some gameplay of Robotech that I made a discovery. There were some levels where you can go from mech to jet, just like Gunmetal. Both games came out the same year. I'm guessing it was a major coincidence. I don't know, I don't want to speculate, but Gunmetal is essentially Robotech Battle Cry without the anime and plot. <laughs> and I love this. I've avoided replaying Robotech all these years to avoid ruining my childhood. However, after playing Gunmetal, I think it's safe to say I can replay Robotech and my childhood memories will be fine because this is this is this is like my cup of tea, man. This is so much fun. All right, so like I said, the missions in Gunmetal are pretty simple. The escort ones aren't as annoying as you think they would be. Most of the time you can zoom ahead and clear the way. A lot of missions have friendly AI. They do manage to kill enemies, and at the very least, they take the heat off of you. Then the game takes a hard left turn into difficult territory. There's one mission where you have no friendly AI. There's mines everywhere. Heavily guarded locations. If that wasn't enough, you have to destroy these missile silos. Each one will begin to start launch sequences. You have to destroy them before they launch. What makes this frustrating is that you don't have a visual timer. You just have the one voiced character warning you about the potential launch. How much time do you have? It's impossible to know. It's one of the few missions where killing everything isn't the answer. The solution is to tank as much of the damage as possible while dodging, then throw everything you have at the missile silos. Rinse and repeat a few times. There are some ways to limit enemy numbers. In missions where you aren't pressed for time, you can take out hangars before the enemies have time to take flight. One mission has you taking out enemy bases. If you take out the radar installations, you can approach with the element of surprise. It doesn't make a whole lot of ton of sense, to be honest. Do you think the radar going down, essentially making everyone blind, would sound all kinds of alarms? The point is, though, that this mission has soldiers running to their planes. You can take them out before they're able to take flight. It's a really cool mission. There's only one level that I hated that I mentioned like four times in the intro. <laughs> Earth is sending forces through a jump gate. You have to take it out before they send another fleet through. Again, a mission with a timer. However, I found out that by going faster only means the timer goes faster as well. This could be false, but it very well sounded like I was achieving this voice line. Quicker and quicker as I got better at doing the beginning parts of this mission. There is no energizer, ammo is only dropped occasionally, there are enemies everywhere, it requires switching between jet and mech modes to maximize health and damage output, it's a nightmare! It took me an stupid amount of tries. You think after a big event such as this, the game would be over, but no, there's actually one more mission. The enemy is sending everything it has as one last ditch effort to win the war. While kinda anticlimactic in practice, I kinda love this. Too many games end in one big event, Gunmetal ends on a cleanup. It was a smart move as well because this mission is very fun. Two big armies clashing, allowing the player to unleash all the late game weapons. I went from, okay, maybe I actually hate this game, to no, never mind. <laughs> I still love it. And seriously, jokes aside, I love this game. It goes dirt cheap during Steam sales and works without needing to tinker with anything. It's also on GOG and Zoom platform. I highly recommend it wherever you plan to buy it. It's short. I beat it in one sitting. It won't waste your time. After beating the game, you can replay all the levels. This means you can take your overpowered late game arsenal to an earlier level and lay waste. So you could theoretically get more than the 2.5 hours of game time I have in it currently. Regardless, it's a worthwhile bite-sized experience. Thank you for watching, and as always, let me know what games you'd like to see reviewed. I have a spreadsheet where I keep track of requests. You can find it in the description below. The next video is something very interesting that is relatively undercovered at least at the moment. I hope you're ready for a worn out space bar. Until then, I'm gonna finally revisit Robotech Battlecry. See you in the next episode of whatever it is that I'm teasing.